All right, folks, so here we are with the mini ITX build. Now, first of all, what I would like to start off with is whenever I start, this is the planning stage, meaning we're going to figure out where everything is going to go, the layout, where everything is going to go, and how, you know, how much we're basically going to do a quick drawing of what this is going to look like. Then I can put in my aluminum order for the, for the, and start putting the case together. Now, normally what I start out with is just a big piece of cardboard, just like this. This is a, a box I got from something I had shipped in, and then we can place everything on it, draw everything out, label it where everything is going to go, and then we can start, you know, getting that picture in our heads, because it's all about getting that picture in our head of what the final product needs to, wants to look like. So, and I don't do any 3D rendering or drawings, because first of all, I don't know how. Second of all, I like it this way. That way I can get an actual, you know, look at, you know, if, is this too close or is it too far away, you know. So that way I, I, do, I do everything in my head. I see a picture and then I get what I need and I put, start putting it together so we can find out where everything is going to go. Now before I get into that though, I was going to do an unboxing about this, but I d decided not to because, you know, it's $150, $160 power supply. I got it at cheap. Uh, normally the budget-ish power supplies that I've gotten and dealt with were just very basic. You open the box, there's a plastic bag. However, this one surprised me. When I opened up the box, I was saw things that I was not expecting. There's some really nice quality foam here on the sides. They come off. And then the power supply itself is in a really nice fabric Velcroed bag. You open it up and it comes out. I've never had I've never dealt with an EVGA supernova power supply before. It's to, it's a 650 watt. So I wasn't expecting too much, but when I opened up this box again, I was very surprised. So it came in that nice packaging with the bag. Came with this bag. It also included, you know, the regular power supply. It also included these velcro tie straps. I've never seen these included with a power supply before, which is really, really nice. So you can, you can, you know, you can manage your cables really nicely with these guys. And there are five of them, so there's plenty to, you know, help you out a lot with your build. It also included this. This is what they're calling a, um, a detection tool. Basically, you plug it into your 24-pin connector here. You plug it in and then you can turn the power supply on and it will actually turn on with nothing else connected other than this what it does is if you look right here these two pins it's basically a jumper now these are all blacked out but if you look at another power supply that are not blacked out one you will see one green cable and the ones next to it are black those are the ground cables if you jump those two pins then you're, you can turn your power supply on without having anything else connected. So say you're doing a water cooling loop and if you don't have any other means like a, like a second power supply, what you can do is you unplug everything that's plugged in and then you take your green and your black wires and you jump those two terminals. And then you can turn your power supply on and that will that will turn the supply on and you know if you as long as you leave your your, your water pump plugged in, your water pump will then begin to run and cycle the water through. That's how you can bleed out your what your coolant, you bleed out your cooling system without turning the entire computer back on, which is something you don't want to do because all you want you don't want your power supply or your uh, your motherboard or your hard drives or anything else to turn on. You just want the pump. So if you go to the green and the black terminals and you jump it, then that's what you do. Like use a paper clip or a, or a, something else. This power supply came with this, which is becoming very handy, which I do have another method. However, I was over at my friend's house doing his Blight Striker water cooling build, which there will be a video coming about that, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I forgot to bring my, uh, my Molex power supply. This would have came in handy. So that's actually really cool of EVGA to include that. And basically everything else is standard. All the cables, are, like, they're fully modular, they're all black, they're all labeled, they're all here. Now these are all going to be custom, I'm going to be taking these sleeving off and custom sleeving all of these. And they're all going to get shortened or lengthened as needed because I'm going to be doing, I have decided that this build is going to be a complete 100%
well, more like 90% blackout build. It's going to be a complete stealth build. <clears throat> so the every all the cables are going to be black. The inside is going to be black. Uh, there will be a video coming, so make sure you hit subscribe to see that. I'm going to be vacuum forming this motherboard, so that way there is going to be a, a cover over the entire motherboard. There's going to, I'm going to put a little fan in here and everything too, so that way it gets cooled under. It's very similar to the Asus, um, the armor that they make on their on for their motherboards, where the whole motherboard is covered, but covered in a piece of plastic shield. It's going to be similar to that, but slightly different. And you can see the heat sink for the chipset has been removed because I'm also working on sand casting a custom mono block as described in another video. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can catch that video. That one's going to be coming soon. And I chose this Intel one mainly because, you know, it was inexpensive. It's a 120 gigabyte SSD. And it also comes, they also include these black cover plates. It's just got some double side tape on the back. If you peel it off, you stick it on there, which is going to go great with this build since it's, since it's going to be an all black build. All right, here we are, this planning stages. So I have decided to add the Grid Plus for fan speed control, the Intel SSD, and we are having the XSPC single bay reservoir, and here's our radiator and fan assembly. Now, normally, when you see your motherboard in your case, you're looking and you find your rear I your rear I.O. facing outward like this. That way you can plug all of your things in, your peripherals, your displays, or whatever you have plugged in, and they are out in the back facing the rear of the case. I have decided that since this is going to be a display case, basically, that it is going to go on the side like this, with the with the I.O. facing this way. Now what that's going to allow is I could make channel similar to this one, place it right here, and then the, the top acrylic will have a black border around it, so that way you couldn't see, and all of your cables will basically have, you have one group of cables coming in, and then will run down the side and plug into all of your peripherals. So that way everything is nice and neat, and you don't, and there's also less chance of anything getting snagged or caught, say you're going ahead and moving it around, you're going to have all of your cables in one location. All you have to do is slide the glass off. That would reveal this cavity right here where all of your cables are. Now, and the graphics card normally would sit like this. However, I would like to make this, this case as low profile as possible. Plus, I am also currently working on making a custom mono block for this graph for this motherboard. So it's going to cover the CPU plus the chips of itself. That's why the heat sink is not here. And I'm going to put the graphics card right like this. See if we can get that lined up right. So obviously I'm going to need to buy a riser cable to you know bring this around into here. And then also your HDMI or your whatever cables that you decide to use for back here will also be in this channel. It'll be nice and hidden, tucked away, and nice and grouped together as one. Now, I would, I would also like this to be upgradable in the future for a longer power supply, if, if or you know, a, a full-size graphics card. So basically, we're going to take our handy little tape measure, if I could find it around here. Here we are. Now, typically, a full-size graphics card, you're looking at, eh, we'll say, 13 inches. So, from here to here, just like that, and that will give you adequate room, plus about an, about an inch of clearance between the graphics, the end of the graphics card and this, if you decide to go with a blower style card. And then the power supply would sit right here, so the only thing cables that you would have is your group of I.O. cables here, and then your power cable back here. So everything will be nice and neat, again. And as far as the other things are concerned, the radiator will go on the side panel like this. And then you have all of this, this, all this empty space here. So with the Intel SSD, because it comes with this black plastic cover, which would match the build, I believe I'm going to mount this say right around here elevated so that way and, and I'm probably going to end up 
angling it somewhat like that because we also have headroom because the radiator is the tallest component. So it's probably going to be angled somewhat like this, slight of an angle, so that way it's facing forward when you're looking down you can see the very front of it. And then in the grid, we were probably going to put this, say, we'll turn, we'll, well, it's going to make that part upside down. So this is going to go somewhat like that, so that way the power cable can come straight in, and then the USB cable can come out and run maybe along this way, just plug into one of these USB headers right here. And then we are going to be using the XSPC single bay reservoir, which will mount, let's say if we put this like right around here, we could mount this right around here. That would be good. I like that. That way that'll hide some of the cabling from the grid and you would have your fluid level right there on the front. And also on the front of this case, what we're going to do is we will have another little channel somewhat like this so that way we could hide the 24 pin cable which is right here as you can see let me get this silly little tie off of here and let's place it right here go there and then it will go down like this which is becoming apparent I may need to make some sort of a cover but that's okay because I have a vacuum former now and this would come this way and then plug just nice and neatly into the motherboard like this So it looks as though this cable does not need any custom lengthening. Any cables that are going to be too long or create too much of a too much of a mess with you know co you know coiling it up and everything are going to be custom lengthed. Like for instance, this one. It needs a, it runs this is going to run off of a single Molex, and then the pump is going to be in this area as well, which has not yet arrived. That'll be show, showing up in a few days. So there's going to be one Molex for this and one Molex for the pump. Obviously, I don't need a huge giant Molex cable, which I can show you. Let's see if I can find one. In this plethora of cables. Here we are. Here's a Molex cable. So here's a Molex cable that would plug in say, right around here. So I need the pump and this plugged into a Molex. Obviously I don't need all of this. So this is definitely going to get cut down. Probably to leave with just these two Molexes. I'll probably end up removing this one. So it will be... Approximately that long. One for the grid and one for the pump. And that's a whole lot neater than having this and then having to coil it up and zip tie this together and like that. And since this is a fully modular power supply, there are more Molex cables. So if I decide to add something else that requires a Molex, I have more cables to go with. And so, so you guys get the final, final view. This is the approximate of what this is going to look like when it is finally done. And you're let's say you're looking through the uh, the acrylic top. Actually, I might, I might actually put this right here. That would cover some of the cables coming out of the power supply and make that look a little bit more neater. So this is basically what it's going to look like, just minus minus the pump, which is probably going to go into this area here. And then you also still have like this will be raised up a bit. So you're still going to have room here, like say if you wanted to add additional storage, like say a terabyte hard drive, 
you would have there would be space enough to add on as well. So that's basically going to sum it up. Um, oh, one last thing to mention. I have not yet ordered any tubing or fittings yet. The only thing that I did get was a handful of 90 degree, 90 degree fittings, just so I can start getting an idea of tubing relay, tubing layout. The reason I haven't ordered any of that yet is because I haven't decided whether I'm going to go with uh, rigid tubing or soft tubing. I believe I'm going to go with a rigid tubing because that would give more straight lines and I think I will just believe it would look a lot neater and also that the the water block that I'm currently working on for this motherboard I am on once that is finished and it's installed and as long as it works the way that I'm hoping it's going to work I'm going to be vacuum forming this motherboard so that way there's going to be a nice black cover over top of the entire motherboard you're not going to see any of this it's going to be a nice flat surface right here everything else is going to be nice and covered I'm going to include a little tiny fan that I have for right here um, so that way you know underneath of that shield the motherboard is getting airflow and it's all going to be blacked out and then I'm going to be placing a few strategic white LEDs prefer, prefer, you know, probably a couple in the reservoir and then say like here along the rear I.O. cover once that's all covered up and something going this way and as long as that water block works then I'm also going to be making another water block for the graphics card that's why I have not ordered the water block for the graphics card yet so make sure you guys stay tuned hit that subscribe button I really need those likes I'd really like the, for this channel to succeed and I need your guys help for that so if you could just hit that subscribe button that would be much appreciated and stay tuned, and we'll be back with some more of this uh, this custom build. Hey guys, one last thing. If you guys do have any questions, comments, or even suggestions for this build, feel free to go ahead and drop them in the comments section. I'm way open and very communicative. I'll, I'll try and answer everybody's questions as they come in. And uh, yeah, I'm off to play some Assassin's Creed because I've been way busy with this channel for the past two weeks and all the projects I'm working on. So again, make sure you stay subscribed to keep up with what's coming, and I will catch you in the next video. Then out.